A wind of 45 meters per second passes over a house with an area of 300 square meters. What is the lift force created by this wind? So let's start with a picture. So let's say this is the person's house. Let's say it's a rectangular house, just to keep things simple. And so there's a wind moving at 45 meters per second that passes over the house. And this is the area of the top surface of the house. So that's 300 square meters. How can we calculate the lift force generated by this wind? And how does this process even work? So let's say this is just a section of the roof from the side view. Now, as the wind passes over the top part of the roof, it creates a low pressure region. If you remember, according to Bernoulli's principle, whenever the velocity of a fluid is high, the pressure is low. And when the velocity is low, the pressure is high. So there's no airflow beneath the roof or inside the house. So we have a high pressure region. And pressure is force over area. So the high pressure is going to create an upward force, which we'll call F1. And the low pressure will create a downward force F2. The difference in these two forces is the lift force FL. Now, F1 is going to be greater than F2 due to the higher pressure at the bottom. And so that's why when a wind passes over the house, it's going to create a lift force. Now, how can we calculate this lift force? Let's use Bernoulli's principle to do it. Now keep in mind that the lift force is based on the difference between the high pressure and the low pressure. So it's based on the difference in uh, the pressure values. So let's start with Bernoulli's equation. P1 plus rho g h1 plus 1 half rho v1 squared is equal to P2 plus rho g h2 plus 1 half rho v2 squared. Now the height difference between the low pressure region and the high pressure region is insignificant. The height of the roof, the thickness, we could ignore. And we don't have any values to use that portion of the equation, so we're going to get rid of it. So I'm going to take P2, move it to this side. And then I'm going to take this term, move it to the other side. So P1 minus P2, that's the pressure difference, that's equal to 1 half rho v2 squared minus 1 half rho v1 squared. So the difference in pressure is going to be 1 half. We could factor out 1 half in the density, 1 half rho times the difference or the square difference in the speeds. Now force or pressure is force over area. So if we multiply both sides by the area, we can see that the force is pressure times area. So in this equation, I'm going to multiply the left side and the right side by the area. So on the left side, the change in pressure times the area is going to be the difference between F1 and F2. Because if I multiply P1 minus P2 by A, I'm going to get P1A minus P2A. And that's going to be F1 minus F2, which is basically the lift force. So therefore, the lift force is delta P times A. So here's the equation that we need. The lift force is 1 half times the density of air times the area upon which that air acts upon times the square difference in the wind speeds. So now let's calculate the lift force. Now, the one thing I forgot to give you in this problem is the density of air, which can vary based on the temperature. But the value that I like to use is 1.29. That's the density of air at 0 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to use that. So it's 1.29, and then the area is 300 square meters. 
and then v2 is 45, v1 is 0. So 0 0.5 times 1.29 times 300 times 45 squared. That's going to give us a lift force of 391,837.5 newtons. So that's how you can calculate the lift force if you're given the wind speed. Number two, an airplane has a mass of 1,200 kilograms and a wing area of 20 square meters. The wind speed at the top surface of the wings of the airplane is 80 meters per second and the wind speed at the bottom surface is 65 meters per second. What is the lift force acting on the plane? And what is the net vertical force acting on it? So feel free to try this problem. So let's talk about how this is going to work. Let's say this is the wing of the airplane. So it's curved. And the reason why it's curved is because the distance that the wind has to travel on the bottom is less than the distance that the wind has to travel on top. Let's make this a blue line. So because the wind has to travel a greater distance at the top part of the airplane, it speeds up. So as the airplane moves forward, the wind will move in the other direction through the plane. So we're going to have a low speed beneath the wings of the plane, which in this example is 65 meters per second, and the speed is higher at the top part of the plane, which is 80 meters per second. And so whenever the speed is high, the pressure is low. So we're going to have a low pressure region at the top surface of the wing of the plane, and at the bottom surface, we're going to have a high pressure region. And so a higher pressure exerts a greater force. A low pressure exerts a weaker force. So this is going to create a net upward lift force, just like any other problem. And so that's how an airplane works. So because the top surface has a greater distance than the bottom surface, the speed of the air has to be greater than at the top. And that creates a low pressure region, which causes the wings of the airplane to lift up as the airplane moves forward in the air. Now, let's use the same equation that we used last time to calculate the lift force. So it's 1 half times the density of air times the area times the difference, the square difference in the speeds above and below the airplane's wings. So the density of air at 0 degrees Celsius is 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter. The area of the wings is 20 square meters. And the speed of the plane at the top is 80 meters per second, and at the bottom it's 65. So 1 half times 1.29 times 20, and times 80 squared minus 65 squared. That's going to give us a lift force of 28,057.5 newtons. So that's the answer to part A. Now let's move on to part B. What is the net vertical force acting on the plane? We'll use this value later. So I'm just going to rewrite it over here. Now let's use a box to represent the airplane. So as the airplane moves forward, it creates an upward lift force in a positive y direction, and we have the weight force in a negative y direction. So the net vertical force in the y direction is the difference between the upward lift force and the weight force, and the weight force is mg. So we have a lift force of 28,057.5 minus m, which is 1,200 kilograms, times g, which is 9.8. So 
So then that vertical force is positive 16,297.5 newtons. So this plane is going up. 